In this tutorial, we will review different types of ground vehicles and their proper tactical application. As you might already know, there are five main vehicle types in the game – light tanks, medium tanks, heavy tanks, SPGs or self-propelled guns, and SPAAGs – self-propelled anti-aircraft guns. Light tanks are very mobile and have quick-firing guns, but they have extremely light armor. These tanks are good for outflanking your enemy, scouting enemy positions, and finally, light tanks can also be used offensively by targeting your enemy's crucial tank modules and parts such as engine, cannon, horizontal and vertical aiming drives, and ammo. A light tank is also good for smoking out those entrenched enemies with artillery strikes that it can call in. In the simulator mode, light tanks get two respawns each, but if you play the arcade or the realistic mode, your light tank will only have a single chance of making the best of it. If you seek fast-paced and high-risk combat, this is the vehicle for you. However, the tech tree for light tanks ends at Tier 4. If you wish to compete with Tier 5 vehicles, you best get a heavier machine. Medium tanks are mobile, reasonably armored, and have moderately fast-firing guns, especially on higher tiers. These tanks are good for players who prefer mobile and tactical combat. Medium tanks get some of the fastest turning turrets in the game and rather good cruising speeds. Medium tanks play a key role in any battle, as they are usually the ones to capture objectives and provide fast response from one flank to another. They're also good in close combat with enemy tanks. All medium tanks can call in artillery strikes just as the light tanks can. The respawn rules for medium tanks are also identical to light tanks. Heavy tanks, the most armored of all, heavily armed and also the slowest of all ground vehicles. Their primary role is to attract and absorb enemy fire, hold important ground on the map and destroy enemies with their high caliber cannons. Heavy tanks have only a single respawn in all game modes, but they are absolutely crucial to success thanks to their superior armor and firepower. SPGs, or the self-propelled guns, have the heaviest and most accurate cannons, guns that are able to engage and destroy enemy vehicles at extreme distances. In addition to that, certain SPGs are rather well armored and fast, while some have a very low profile. All this makes it difficult for an enemy to return fire on SPGs at such extreme ranges. But alas, all SPGs have one common problem – they lack a rotating turret. The limited traverse forces you to constantly turn the entire hull of the vehicle to engage targets outside the set traverse of the cannon. Any close engagement with any light or medium tank could be especially troublesome. This type of vehicles is best used by players who prefer slower-paced sniping action. War Thunder currently has combined arms combat in arcade and realistic modes, where both aircraft and tanks fight it out on the same map. So, you might have a question, how can tanks interact and engage with aircraft? Well, the most important thing a ground vehicle can do against a plane is to spot it. This can be done by pressing three keys in a short sequence – T, then 1, then 7. This key sequence will send out an attack order. If an allied pilot makes actual visual contact with an enemy tank, he will see a special marker indicating the player's name and his vehicle type. SPAAGs are quite different from other types of vehicles. In the early stages of any arcade mode battle, they are probably the least effective as no enemy players will have enough time to earn points to select an aircraft. However, some SPAGs can be quite devastating versus lower tier tanks, if you arm them with armor piercing rounds though. But remember, they're quite vulnerable themselves because of their light armor. Their true effectiveness shines in the later stages of the arcade and realistic battles, especially in squad battles of the said modes. The SPAAGs and tanks have a lead marker, just as the aircraft have in arcade aviation battles. This makes the entire experience much harder and fun for the pilots going against anti-aircraft guns. Come on, let's face it, who doesn't like to take out a bomber from the ground? But let's get back to ground warfare. In any given battle, there will be several typical attack tactics. The most common blitz tactic is rush the middle. This tactic is aimed at quick capture of the central objective and holding it for as long as possible. Otherwise, these mindless rushes all the way towards the enemy usually end up pretty bad for the perpetrators. But sometimes even these obvious tactics work out and such brave attack can instantly turn the tide of some battles. Flank attack the best and the most effective way to play medium tanks. Just move around all the major engagements towards the exposed enemy sides and rear and then surprise and attack the enemy. 
combat support. This is a role where you get to a position with commanding view of the battlefield and some cover to hide behind. In case you need to repair your tank or simply reload. Then you do just what the role is called. You support your advancing allies by taking out enemy targets or bolster the defenses of your team should it fall back. In this scenario, you should remember that your enemy will not be a sitting duck and will actively try and seize battlefield objectives elsewhere, which in turn might turn the scale of the battle in their favor. If you play alone, we recommend that you bide your time. Move from cover to cover, always try to outflank your enemy while staying relatively close to the main group of your allies. But if you have a team that you can trust, you can try a combined arms approach. For example, one of you can take a heavy tank and move forward, while another of your team covers him with an SPG from behind some cover, while a medium tank moves around the flank to destroy the enemy engaged by your two other teammates. Whatever the approach, never come out in the open, where you can be attacked from multiple directions and always maintain visual contact with your teammates. Now, let's review some of the major game maps and show you a couple of tactics that will suit certain types of vehicles well. Of course, there are many ways to win, but we offer tactics that we often use ourselves. One of the most popular and dynamic maps in the game is Ash River. Here you will see some of the bloodiest battles for control of the largest hill that can be used to dominate almost the entire map. Here, your best bet is to take that hill. This is normally done by medium tanks. Then the hill can be occupied by the SPGs so that they can snipe the entire middle of the map, including the road leading from the enemy spawn. The control of this hill is crucial to success of the entire battle on the Ash River. Next, but not least, is Corellia, the domain of sniper duels and cunning flanking maneuvers. On this map, all SPGs should take the western spawns that have a commanding view of the map's center. This is a good position to destroy anyone attempting to seize objectives below. Medium tanks, on the other hand, can outflank the enemy from the eastern spawns and then proceed towards the central hill to engage the SPGs we mentioned earlier. All major heavy tank engagements normally occur in the crevice near the eastern spawn. The Carpathians map is rich with various tactical opportunities, but even here we have the proverbial hill. The ruined castle near the map's middle is a primary objective for both teams. The ruins offer a good view over all objectives, from which SPGs can deny access to all those objectives, while both teams attempt to seize them. But remember that your snipers need some rear guard, such as a couple of heavy tanks. Even a couple of heavy tanks in ruins will be extremely difficult to smoke out. The jungle map is ideal for risky rushes and reasonable outflanking. This map has almost no vantage points with cover, but the map has plenty of small hills and rocks that can serve as decent cover in your advance. Here, a player must seize the main objectives early in battle and make sure the enemy can't retake them. By taking the flanking positions, you can safely shoot at approaching enemy tanks going for the objectives. From here, you can also move in towards the map's middle if necessary. Next up is Kuban. Kuban is quite similar to jungle, but only in the fact that there's no use rushing the middle early on. The central objectives are well covered and it will be extremely difficult to get there unhurt at the beginning of a battle. Use flanking approaches, take on all impatient enemy tanks and you will win. Next up is Poland, a map that is widely considered an urban map, but still has some open and relatively even ground. The only major cover from the enemy SPGs here is the small town and the map's middle. All major battles and skirmishes occur inside the town on narrow streets and lanes. The fields and small woods are meant to be taken by the SPGs with good long-range cannons. Therefore, we advise all non-SPG players to stick closer to the town for cover. Finally, we have Eastern Europe. This map was added in one of the recent patches. Unlike Poland, the town here is much larger and closer to player spawn points. The town is divided by a river and linked by several bridges. The main goal here with almost all types of vehicles is a steady advance across both flanks while keeping an eye out for enemy at your own sides. If you play a light or a medium tank, we recommend you to take corners of the town and wait for the heavy tanks to move closer to the enemy. That's all for today. Our following tank tutorials will tell you more about other tactical plans for various types of missions across all maps and show you some cunning vantage points for sniper ambushes. Good luck on the field of battle!